and welcome back. Uh, in the previous video, we were talking about the African campaign of World War II, and today what we're going to do is talk about the European campaign, which is sort of in this weird period during and after uh, the African campaign. So uh, what we're going to do is just basically go over a basic overview of the major battles and stuff, and uh, yeah, so it should be good. So uh, first off, you know, I do a little review. Of course, in, in Africa here, you have the Operation Torch and Rommel and, and El Alamein going on. And then after the African campaign essentially wraps up and, and, and Rommel has been essentially pushed back through Libya, through Tunisia, the, the big three, which are uh, Stalin and FDR and Churchill, He'll, here's a newspaper from the, from the Cleveland Press. And, and basically the big three get together at the Tehran Conference, and Tehran is in, is in uh, Iran, in, in 1943. And, and basically Stalin at this time is, is single-handedly trying to defeat the, the Germans, and a lot of German forces are, are, are stationed on this eastern front. And, and unlike Germany, which had a very easy push back east, um, or Germany had an easy push east, uh, the Soviet Union, it, it took them about two and a half years to go all the way from, from Moscow and Leningrad and Stalingrad to push all the way back east to, to Berlin. And they eventually get there and they have completely invade Poland, but it takes a while for the Soviet Union to churn out all those forces and and train those soldiers and build those tanks and then Stalin was pissed he was so upset he was telling FDR and, and, and Churchill what are you doing I need help we I my soldiers are dying my country is dying I need some assistance and and during this this conference the Tehran conference that really came at a head so the big three agreed to open a second front against Germany in the east and Stalin agrees later on to actually invade Japanese territory in Eastern Asia and China. So there's, there is a, a, a mutual agreement between especially Stalin and FDR. Those were the two guys. Of course, you know, they're fighting similar fronts. They both have a West and an East front, which is very interesting. Britain, of course, is, is very much focused on their colonial possessions as well as uh, the, the country itself. So in 1943, after the um, the Battle of Kazarine Pass, and um, basically it was the, the last major war, or the last major battle of, of the African campaign, uh, in 1943, uh, the American and British forces invade Sicily, and it was called Operation Shingle. Now, we're not going to go too much into the, the, uh, the individual battles here, but just to kind of give a, a basic overview of what happened and actually here's an excellent video of an american african-american unit in italy during the time but but italy was known as the soft underbelly of europe as the of the axis because of course if you were able to get all the way through europe you could eventually hit germany very easily and you didn't have to go through france you you didn't have to go through through turkey and go west it was it was supposed to be an easy ba an easy battleground called operation shingle uh, but it, it turned out to be the exact opposite. Italy, in a lot of ways, was a quagmire. Uh, the Italian geography is very bumpy. There are lots of mountains all along here. And, and though in, in 1944, the, the uh, Allies, Britain and the United States, will eventually, um, in, in 1944, liberate Rome and, and push all the way north to what that's called the Gothic Line up here in September 1944. So, I mean, they, they really do push north, and you can see the Canadian army decides to go eastward into Yugoslavia. Don't ask me what the Canadians are doing. They're just being Canadian. So, so Italy is, is, becomes one of the major fronts of the war uh, between 1943 and 1944. And, and what happened, too, is you see a lot of military strength starting to coalesce around America's uh, air force and aircraft. There's actually a book written um, called uh, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, and uh, Joseph Heller was a World War II veteran. He was a, actually a man about a, it was a novel about a man who was a pilot in Italy, uh, and it kind of discusses a lot of the horrors of flying and, and being part of the, the Army Air Corps during the time period in Italy and, and the flack that they'd get shot down, and a very interesting 
um, depiction of the war. And so what happens is during 1943 and 1944, uh, the United States and Britain pretty much get a, an allied front of, of taking out some of these, these German cities, these large German production centers uh, in Berlin and in, in Munich. And, and more, one of the more famous bombing raids that took place of the United States trying to take out some of these German epicenters was the bombing of Dresden. And uh, basically, the, these B-17 flying fortresses and, and lots of other um, crafts that um, came after it as well basically just completely destroyed so many uh, cities through these this fire bombs, napalms. And here's actually a picture of Dresden right here of, of the destruction afterwards. Uh, the burning, this is the burning of the city of Dresden, as I'm saying. Uh, it, over 100,000 people died in, in about a year and a half of all this bombing. Well, there was a, there's a sp specific uh, bombing in 1944 that caused most of this. And, and Kurt Vonnegut, who's the author of Slaughterhouse-Five, who was also a, a World War II veteran who was at Dresden, talked about this incident uh, through a fictional character. And it kind of goes through the horrors of, of what of what happened to American POWs that were stuck behind enemy lines and they'd have to go to these places and the Americans were bombing them and, you know, trying to, to stop the forces. So, I mean, it's a really, really, really interesting book, an interesting time period. And I mean, if you think about it in history, I mean, was the bombing of all these cities completely necessary to stop the German, the German warfare at, at the time? So that's an interesting uh, question I'd pose, but let's let's move on. So so after that, you after the the bombing of Germany and there's some bombing of places in France as well. The United States, uh, led by General Ike Eisenhower and uh, the, the British, led by uh, Bernard Montgomery, who we talked about before, decided in 1944 to unleash. Operation Overlord, and Operation Overlord was on the 6th of June in 1944. It was the day of, of the invasion of France. They call it the invasion of Normandy. So here we can see the um, where the different forces were invading. Uh, this is actually a really excellent map. So, you know, you have a trade up here. You have uh, other parts of Normandy. The, the first area where the, where the United States and, and the Allies truly took over was actually behind the lines of the beaches. Uh, the United States and Great Britain had a lot of paratroopers. A lot of people talk about the 101 Air, Air, Airborne Division. And uh, the first city that was, was taken by the Allies at this was St. Mary Glees. And that was right on the, uh, on the Utah beach over here. Now, this is a video over here from Saving Private Ryan which is supposed to be a, a dramatic a dr dramatic interpretation of the events of the uh, invasion of the beach of Omaha, which was right here. Uh, actually, Omaha was a complete blunder on the American parts. Uh, they So many awful things happened um, <laughs> compared to the other beaches that, you know, hundreds or thousands of Americans would die on the beaches uh, because of certain you know, fluctuations in weather, uh, mechanical issues and, and you know if when you watch the video you'll see you know german machine gun batteries and stuff like that so it was a pretty it was it was one of the largest if not the largest um w amphibious invasions in the war if not the world uh the the pacific theater also has some pretty in, insane amphibious assault. So we have the, the, the attack of swor sword and Juno and gold, and that's the Canadian flag and the British flag. So they basically invade uh, Normandy, which was this area up here. And, and the United States and, and Bradley, Bradley, General Bradley was an American general, Montgomery, they were pretty successful pushing through back through Paris. They are mildly successful until about Christmas in 1945. And then you have the Battle of the Bulge. And the Battle of the Bulge is, is the last Nazi advance back into France to try, it's the last offensive to try to stop the American and British forces. So you can kind of see this area right here is the Bulge, and it's, it's right on the the, the border of, of France and, and Germany, and it's right, you see Luxembourg to the south, so it's right in this area here 
uh, between Germany and France. And, and Germany actually gets pretty good headway through here. You can see they, they the Americans have to go all the way back to uh, Chernon and, and the, the the most famous um, incidents during the Battle of the Bulge, they call it uh, Bastogne or Bloody Bastogne, where the 101, see, as we were talking about, the 101 Airborne Division actually holds the city of Bastogne against the German advance. And it's a pretty, pretty amazing battle in American history. And there's actually a lot of um, popular movies about it and other things that are made during the time uh this is actually um some real footage from the time too so get, get a chance to watch this too battle of the bulge i mean really interesting time and, and and during all this that's going on in the west and you know the united states and the, the british forces are, are marching through france and trying to get to germany you know about you know when when america is at the border of that what happens is is in in may 1945 and before that the german or the 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 I apologize. The Soviet Union has already marched in to Berlin on May 8th, 1945. Um, it was the last day of the war. The Battle of Berlin, it happened uh, roughly, it starts on April 16th, 1945. And what you can see the American forces coming in here. They're just about to the Elba River. And, and of course, the Soviet forces have completely surrounded the city of berlin uh, on frankfurt and they've come all the way across and and they just massively shell the city to the ground and you could watch that in this video too i mean just a classic uh siege destruction and the soviet forces of course wanting to take berlin all for themselves i mean this was a race right here this race from the west to the east because the the americans knew if they were able to get to berlin before um before the end of the war that they would have a little bit more um a little bit more say and a little bit more sway to to help to to, to keep germany as a whole state to, to make it more democratic and of course the soviet forces were interested in 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 communism and on may 8th uh the war the war in europe will end it's a ve day and, and hitler will end up killing himself in his bunker with his mistress eva braun uh maybe about one or two days before that and then a few months before the battle of berlin um the big three will meet again at the yalta conference uh you'll have fdr uh winston churchill and joseph stalin and if we can remember quickly actually fdr will die in a couple months in i believe it was either april or may so he'll hardly get to see the end of the conflict and, and the big three at the yalta conference specifically talked about some of the problems that were going to occur in post-war europe which uh, there was lots of conflicts of course between fdr churchill and and stalin uh churchill was very much for installing um you know capitalist markets and, and democracy as was fdr but fdr had to deal with stalin and stalin was of course wanting to take control of, of all this land for the good of mother russia and so the disagreements led to the king solomon effect and, and what they basically decided on was after the war was complete they would essentially split Europe in two, where the sphere of influence in the East would be for the Soviet Union and the sphere in the West would be for the United States and Britain. So that kind of ends this this look into into World War Two on the European front and, and some of the intrigue that was going on between these these world leaders and, and the battles that were going on and some of the other, um, you know, destruction I mean, and things that were going on during the war were were very very difficult to comprehend so i uh, hope you have a chance to look at those videos uh, that i put up and i will see you in the next video